The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. The Nostalgia Funhouse proudly dedicates all episodes in the loving memory of Connie Chirac. So, Johnny, I've, I've been hearing really great things about this Nostalgia Funhouse. It just brings back so many great memories. Andrew, uh, another reason I'm getting in line with you here is that you really vouch for this show. So, I'm just going to believe you that this is the show that you know I've been wanting, which is just talking about all the fun stuff from our uh, yesteryear and years before. Uh, and I really hate anything meta, so I'm glad that what we're doing right now is not that. Oh, no, definitely. What is meta? Is, isn't that Ron Artessa's new name? <laughs> well, add world and peace to it, sure. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is great. They Like, last year they were, like, tearing play sets and Halloween costumes. And well, they, that sounds cool. They get, like, these weird court recordings from, like, pop culture courts. Does anybody care about court cases? Uh, these ones are kind of cool. They put hmm. Scott Kelvin on trial for Santa Claus there. But, oh wow! Yeah. Okay, you're. That sounds interesting. Yeah, man. You know what's the best part about this is though? Is I hear they always got a really great sponsor. You can check it out right there. Kids, come meet your new sitter. <laughs> Looks like a good time to check out Burger King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Costume. I'm so scared. <sighs> Universal Studios monsters are on the loose. You can get one toy and glow-in-the-dark sticker inside every kids' club meal at Burger King. Wow, really nice costume. Burger King Kids Club. Great food, cool stuff, kids only. Oh, yes, welcome. It's another episode of the Nostalgia. Haunted House, and here are your hosts, Andrew the Ghoulish Lens, and Johnny, please help me, Townsend. Why, thank you. That was Dracula, right? Yeah, that was Dracula. I mean, obviously, I don't know why you're asking it like it's a question. It definitely wasn't me, just doing a Dracula voice. Johnny, I can't even remember my kid's name half the time. <laughs> it's that vampire down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'd feel about a vampire living down the hall for me. Well, There'd be too much activity at night. I, I have heard having children does suck. <laughs> uh, there are days. <laughs> there are days. You know I, what? Watched, <laughs> I watched two and a half men. Uh, yeah. This is before I had children, and the mother on there said, the reason why you have children is so death doesn't look so bad, and my mother never laughed so loud, and I was like, that's <laughs> kind of rude, you know, like, what the hell? That's a little telling what somebody finds funny sometimes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I had children, and there are days where yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to die or anything like that, <laughs> or I don't like my kids. Thursdays were when they're getting a little crazy and it's uh they're a bit much at times turning yeah. into TLC matches in my house. <laughs> yes, yeah. Then I'm like, okay. Yeah, you I mean matches see. where they see who can watch the most TLC. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> she wins every every match. She's the undertaker of TLC. <laughs> yeah. <watching matches. laughs> Undefeated. Yeah. Um uh, but today's a very fun episode, Andrew. Uh, again, in our uh, in the crazy, scary month of October, we're actually going to talk about our own personal experiences with the paranormal here today. Yeah, I think that w- I think that would be fun because I think a lot of people have it as adults, but it, I think also a lot of people might have them as children and just don't fully realize it. Yeah. Uh, I come from a very old section, as I realized, but (laughs) no offense to Texas, but when I look at like Texas history and I'm like, what year was this picture taken? They're like, oh, it's 1901 and they're still living in like log cabins. I'm not really, you know, but it looks very raw 
And I'm like, oh, where I'm from, we had hydropower and Nabisco was moving it. But we also have a lot of old history, Underground Railroad, uh, you know, ties to the Revolutionary War with like the French and Indian War and all that stuff. So it's a very kind of ghostly haunted area in a way. Yeah, and I'm in the South, so there's a lot of haunted stuff here. Uh, and we don't like to talk about our history uh, <laughs> unless it's after the 1900s. <laughs> and even then, it's a bit iffy. <laughs> Just being honest. Uh, yeah. Uh, what bad but, happened uh, in the South? <laughs> I'm, the, the heat. Barbecue brother. and Reba? <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's hot down here. Oh, wait, I forgot. Matt apologized for the barbecue. He did. He did apologize. Reba's on the, uh, is going up. Reba stock. Uh, get in while you can. Yep. <laughs> it's getting expensive. I'm really kind of upset in a way because we can't use that joke anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we can. It just oh, okay. was just less relevant, but doesn't mean we're not going to knock it into the ground as much as possible. <laughs> That's what we do on this show. Go back and listen to previous episodes. Uh, fresh yeah. batch of candy. <laughs> and uh, I had peanut M and M yesterday, and good news, they did not make my stomach hurt. They did it. Oh, there we uh, go. Uh, there we go. I only got the small bag. I didn't get the share bag. So That's because you're an adult. You made an adult decision. <laughs> Well, plus two, I had to get to work and I couldn't find the share back. So, <laughs> so in a way, it was an adult decision. Andrew, can I can I talk to you for a second, Andrew? Yeah, I was trying. I was trying to give you. I was trying to give you some props here for being an adult, and you just took it to just go with it, man. We need this audience to think that we know what we're doing. No, because even my kids will go to my wife and go, "Do you know you married a five year old?" And she'll go, "Yes, yes, I do." So. Well, yeah. I, mm. When you have to go down the toy aisle at Walmart every single time, look, look you're speaking to the Target. you're speaking to the choir. Literally, as of this recording, we're just days away from the next Mario game getting released, and this is the happiest I've been. <laughs> so. Okay, so before we get into this a little recap of about me being a five year old, I was super excited because I found in the re releases of the Playmate Ninja Turtles. I found a Mondo Gecko. Really? Yes. I just want the audience to know that I legit perked up when you said that. I know. I saw the eyes. Like, <laughs> yes. I, I want pictures or it doesn't, or it doesn't, uh, it didn't happen. Pictures or nothing. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Also, I got really excited. Call of Duty, the game that I play way more than I ever expected, uh, just released Skeletor as a playable character. So it's it. Uh, it's like, it looked, it's it Filmation looks, Skeletor? No, it I'll send you pictures. Okay. Well, you can probably actually you can probably just look it up. Skeletor Call of Duty. I don't know why I'm acting like this is thing called the internet. And then it'd be in 2023. <laughs> let me just let me get out my Polaroid camera and I'm gonna take pictures of the screen. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Should be there within three to five days. Yeah, I will mail it to your house. <laughs> oh, he's not bad looking. Yeah, I think he's kind of handsome. <laughs> but I really wanted to start a. You I mean, you've kind of discussed this like a streaming thing, but I was going to. I was going to be a skeleton. And this is really, be. this is really fits. You could actually. But the key was, the key is that I'm not good at it and I'm not. So that part's easy. <laughs> so you just got to run up to people and ask them if they're He Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's in disguise. You know what also made me feel old? Is What's that? I actually typed out Call of Duty when I probably could have just typed in COD. Yeah, I only know I only typed COD because me and uh, Derek and Trevor are constantly talking about it every once in a while, so we just shortened it. But if it wasn't for that, I would most certainly be typing it out myself. If you said COD, I would be like, we're going for fish fry? Yeah. God, I do love a good fish fry, I ain't gonna lie. A good fish fry is pretty great. <laughs> Again, I'm from the south. We love a good fish fry here. In the north, man. We're, we're oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're 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 pretty good with the fish fry. We got the Catholics. So mm-hmm. around uh, the whole, what do they do? They do Lent or something. I can't remember where they can't eat. <laughs> they do Lent or something. I don't know. They do that thing, you know they, those those crazy cats. <laughs> I just know I I know my stepmother is catholic and when her mother died 
my brother and I obviously went to the funeral and we grew up in like a Lutheran church stuff below Catholic. Yeah. So we, I was watching them and they're going in and as they get into the pew, they kneel, do the sign of the cross and right. I looked at my brother and he was like, dude, we don't do that. Just, just sit down. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I grew up in a Mennonite church, so I probably didn't even exist to the Catholics. For oh, a long no. Time. <laughs> oh, no. We're not a thing. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, today, but, uh, speaking of going to church and old religions, we're yeah. uh, talking about uh, ghost stories and the like today. Uh, yes. Perfect for Halloween time. Uh, Andrew, I've been on so many podcasts where I've discussed this. Uh, so if people have listened to me, I'm going to be retelling stories, I'm sure, but I'm very excited to hear yours because I don't think I've heard many of yours. I got some weird ones, like, uh, probably as an adult. So the house that I lived in Niagara Falls, I think there was a dark entry energy. I was on history creeps where Chris talked to me about this. It was just me and him. Yeah. Uh, Yes, where you also you could catch Johnny, and yeah, so I don't know if this is nostalgia, but just the sense of paranormal is that there was just it was just super creepy in the house. Like I didn't like to go upstairs. Yes, because I just always felt heavy. Mm -hmm. And my wife said that she had dreams of a black figure, like a shadowy black figure, yeah, holding her down. And stuff like that. A lot of, uh, what is that, sleep paralysis, which I don't experience anymore <laughs> since yeah. I moved out of that house. But it was just a very heavy, heavy feeling. And then once again, my mom being my mom, being my mom when I was like, I think there was, that house was haunted. She was like, yeah, I could tell there was something messed up with that house. <laughs> <laughs> Things yeah. I could have known yesterday. But yeah. That that's probably the good one. And then I think my first experience with ghost is Yeah, let's tell our ones when we were kids first. I like this. Yeah. My first experience with ghost was at Fort Fort Niagara. Obviously, we live in that area. You go on the field trip. I'm pretty sure you got that thing where everybody, no matter where they're where they're from in your area, has gone to that one place. So we went there and supposedly there was a story of two guys fighting and uh, the one guy beat the other guy. Obviously, I think they were fighting over a woman. You know how history goes. <laughs> and so the other guy was like, oh, crap, what can I do? I'm going to cut off this guy's head that I just killed and I'm going to throw his head down the well. So I remember so obviously I think we're like third, fourth grade, maybe fifth. So everybody, you hear that story. Everybody's going to look down the well and everybody's like, yeah, I, I, I see it. I see the head. I see the head. And that's well is like all the way down. Yeah. And I was like, dude, nobody is seeing this head. And I swear, I looked down the hall. There was nobody else around. I watched this figure with no head, like very like, uh, white misty type thing yeah Walk through the wall turn mm. like it was gonna look at me like it does have a head and then turn back and then walk through the other wall and that's when i was like holy crap and i was quiet and everyone was like why are you quiet i was like i saw the headless ghost and they're like no you didn't no yeah, nobody's gonna believe you yeah. nobody to nobody believes me like i i think the last time I actually told this story was with Chris and Chris was yeah. the only one that was like, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like legit. Like, wow, I could see that happening. Everybody else throughout my whole entire life is like, you are full of it. Like there's, yeah. no point. but I swear, I swear that that happened. Like, I don't even know what I go back there. Uh, I don't like walking down that hallway. I don't like doing anything. Uh, that it's a very creepy place to me now. Like my cousins yeah. and I, when we were older, we were probably like teenagers. Uh, we went back there, and they have like a little chapel, 
but you can't walk back. I'm guessing where they did the confessional or something. It's chained up. And they were like, okay, who's jumping this? Who's jumping this little fence to go over? And I was like, nope. Cause I just got that weird feeling again. Like, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. So, so that place to this day is very weird for me to go. And it's one of the places where you're like, Hey, what do we, what do you want to do today? You want to <clears throat> just run around there and yeah. see some historical things. Cause there's a lot of cool historical things like reenactments. Right. And everything else, but it's just so creepy now when I go to what they call the main castle. Yeah, when I was a kid, for a good chunk of my childhood, my grandparents moved into this big two-story old house that wasn't that far from where we lived, right, growing up. So, with that being said, I was over there all the time. This is when both my parents worked and I was a kid, so even getting off of school, that's where I would go. I spent so many nights, I was very close with my grandparents, right? And uh, the the thing is, the top floor freaked me out as a kid. I didn't like it. I Well, it didn't help that my, <laughs> I, I, I love and miss my grandma, but she collected uh, porcelain dolls, oh, right? So creepy. And my she put them so all, creepy. most of them were put upstairs, so that didn't help any. But what's worse is, I swear to you, every time, and I spent the night over there a lot, every time I spent the night over there, I would hear legit footsteps above my head, and there's no way nobody was up there. And it happened all the time. And my uncle, and I don't know to this day if he was just messing with me, uh, but he claims that he saw one of uh, Grandma's dolls kind of get lifted up and 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 tossed to the floor that type of thing i don't know if that's real or not but i definitely remember him telling me that story uh but it always but i'm like you like anytime i went upstairs like anywhere else in the house you felt fine Mm -hmm. right i never felt heavy or anything like that but the second you started going up those steps there was just some different energy there and it it just i just didn't like it i watched like the ghost shows like probably the one that i kind of stopped because it got old real quick was ghost adventures yeah, that one's a bit much for me, too. Somebody just pretty much summed it up on the internet where it said Ghost Adventures is where a guy calls out ghost and then what calls out ghost, and then when the ghost says square up, the guy runs away. Well, I call it because everything's a demon, according to them. They're oh, all demons. Has... Demon, it's a demon yeah. here, demon there. Uh, to me, the more realistic ghost shows is the ones where, like, Ghost Adventures used to be very good about this. No, ghost Hunters used yeah. to be very good about this, where... Sometimes they go to a place and they didn't find nothing. Yeah. I to me that's more realistic. <laughs> yeah. Show me those to get that's like your control episode. Yeah. The ghost adventures, everybody was always getting possessed. There was a demon oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Getting scratched, or this was the gateway to hell. This was the stairway to hell. I remember all those. But that's when I was like something like kind of clicked in my head where they were like, I feel heavy, it feels cold, it doesn't feel yeah. like right in here. And that was that was a huge one. I stayed at a haunted hotel for my aunt's wedding. I know I was in the fifth grade for this one because I remember I had to do homework and I wasn't happy about it before the wedding. But supposedly uh, Grand Island, New York, there is a hotel. It was a Holiday Inn. I don't know what it is now. But I think it's room 222, 422. It's an even number that ends in 22. I know that. And supposedly that there was a house there. If I'm telling this right, somebody's good. Somebody from Western New York. So I'd be like, no, you're telling it wrong. But supposedly there was a house there. Girl got trapped inside. It burned, burned down. She died and yeah. they built a hotel. And now this girl haunts this hotel, but she really just kind of stays in that room. So right. every room in that hotel, you can stay in but one. And the, I, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't really looked into it. A lot of people say it's more of like a poltergeist type thing, where she just tears the crap out of the room, and they like certain housekeepers will go in there and tidy it up. But most of the time, they every time they go in there, it's just tore tore apart and anything. Yeah. Like that. I think some people have said they've seen her through the hallways. I didn't see anything. 
I know during my aunt's wedding, my uncle got drunk and I just went upstairs like by myself to, to like go to bed. Like somebody just took me up there and they're like, okay, stay in the room. This is the, this is the early nineties people stay in this room. Don't answer the door. <laughs> we'll be up later, you know? And I didn't really get anything like, I didn't feel anything, but then again, I was watching Baywatch in fifth grade, so there were different, <laughs> oh, there were different feeling, feelings, different yes, feelings you're feeling going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were different, different feeling something. Feeling. Yeah. I remember watching Baywatch. That was the thing. I remember watching Baywatch and wondering if this little girl was going to show up in the room <laughs> and attack me, but then Baywatch was on, and eh, different feelings after that. Yeah. But there's a calming feeling about Baywatch. Yeah, I agree. Calming, uh, almost... Um, uplifting feeling about yeah about Baywatch for sure yeah very calming uplifting feeling yeah uh, so uh, Andrew I was I'm very curious about this have you ever done any of the uh ghost hunt uh, go, uh ghost hunting yourself have you ever gone on like a yes yeah I'm very curious about this because I've done this too this was as an adult uh so because like, the Niagara Falls is a very old area. And where I used to work, the good old standard auto wreckers, no longer there, but the building still stands. It's still a very old building. I guess it was a munitions factory or like a munitions depot or factory during World War II. It was an old like tractor plant. So you go through there and it was very odd in that place. So we did a ghost hunt one time and it wasn't anything, uh, not too many people took it serious. They more or less took it as a party. So we split up into groups per se. I mean, I was all in this. I had a video camera set to night vision. We had the headlamps on. I was, I was ready to go. I was ready to go. Uh, had the old voice recorder out on the phone, trying to catch the good old EVPs. Uh, oh yeah. The only thing we got was in the older sections of the building. Cause there's a lot of stuff added onto it. And the oldest, probably one of the oldest or oldest section of the building. Once again, it was very heavy, heavy, heavy feeling. And I do know I had to turn. This was me being an idiot and not realizing stuff. So we had these like the fans in the back. Yeah, and, people who really liked y'all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had a fan in the back next to where we kept like the steel rims or, or like the rims. Yeah. So when you're kind of like looking, you're a little discombobulated. And I looked over and it was like dark. And I was like, oh my goodness, a rim is floating. But then when I turned around and I got a light on it, it was just the fan. And it looked, yeah. but yeah, that was a very heavy feeling. And the only time, I don't know if it was my mind playing tricks on me is I did a lot of stuff by myself there. Cause I did a lot of like inventory checks and everything else. So the majority of the time. I would be by myself and I remember standing on a ladder and I could see out of the corner of my eye and it looked like a little girl in a white dress. And like I said, I don't know if my mind was just playing tricks on me, but when I looked over, it was just like out of the corner of my eye. But when I looked over, she was gone. And supposedly there was a lady that we worked with. Supposedly she was, she said she was psychic or something like that, or she could feel spirits. And she said there was an old man in there and a little girl so that always creeped me out yeah yeah but that's probably my <laughs> biggest ghost hunt right there i wish it would have been better yeah i've been on quite a few uh me and my I've, i'm really good friends with a couple people who are really into it too and uh, my buddy adam has a lot of like he's he kind of has a production background on top of that too so he's got all this equipment and stuff that we could use we also had the the different cameras like you had and stuff like that and uh two different times i've had stuff happen one time we were at we were in an old graveyard in uh, hickory which is the probably the biggest city that i live near and it's a fairly old cemetery on top of that and it's pretty big and they had a new jeep like i can't stress that they've had this jeep less than a year and we get out, we park there, and we get out, and uh, everything was fully charged. And all of a sudden, my camera went out, right? It just just died. And then one of theirs went out. 
And then I was like, man, this is just really creepy. I don't like this. It just feels off. And it could have been, again, it could have just been because we're in a graveyard at night. <laughs> it's never yeah. going to feel, it's never not going to feel creepy. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, let's, let's just go. And it was already kind of late. It was sort of one of those last minute type of things we decided to do. So we all get in the Jeep and Adam cranks the Jeep and he starts to take off and the Jeep dies. <laughs> That's that is a that is a true story. Uh, thankfully, after a couple of tries, it cranked right back up, and it never done that before, or any of that kind of stuff. It could have been coincidence, but the timing was impeccable. Yeah, <laughs> I will say. Uh, but the other time, um, there's this church that uh, was built in like the 1920s or 30s or something like that. And it's fairly old for oh, great time in the south. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we talk about it all the time. And uh, it was an old it was this church that started out as that one part, but it got bigger, so they built onto the church. Mm-hmm. But the a lot of the people there would claim like there's this weird stuff that happened in the old part of the church. So we're like, well, we're gonna check that out. And it happened to be the church that my friend Adam and his wife went to. So like he had the keys and everything, he had access to it. It was we were everything was above boards. What I'm trying to say, I don't want people breaking and entering into places. Yeah. Don't do that. Get permission, please. Uh, but we were <clears throat> so we were we had all the equipment, and uh, the one room uh, is like their youth room where the uh, you know the teenagers would all go during church and stuff like that. Had all kinds of furniture in there. It was a big room, but the door was locked, and that was the one that uh, Adam didn't have the key for, so we couldn't get in there. And I swear to you, <laughs> Andrew, that at one point we heard furniture moving in there. Yeah, really freaked us out. I didn't care for it at all. <laughs> so maybe that was kind of like like the hotel thing. Like, you guys can like hang out here, but don't go into this room. Yeah, but see, I'd been in that room before when I was like visiting them on a church day. Because oh, okay. they were also at one point like the youth leaders. So I was just hanging out with them. So I'd been in that room and I never felt any sort of heaviness or anything like that before. But this was like one or two in the morning and we knew nobody was back there. Doors locked. And it just literally sounded like chairs being moved on wood because it's a wood floor, wooden, uh, wooden floor. Uh, yeah, it was really, really creepy. So I was like, yeah, we can get out of here anytime, guys. <laughs> I remember there. Oh, also, also, because that reminded me, the reason that I was like really pushing for us to leave is they had, I don't remember what it's called, but they had this thing where like you could quote unquote communicate, right? Where oh. you ask and like it would light up the the device. You've seen it on the ghost hunting shows. Yeah. And I, I legit said, hey, if you want to sleep, make this beep so many times. And I swear to you, right within there, it did it perfectly. And I was like, yeah, we got to go, guys. They just don't want us here. (laughs) Complete opposite of Ghost Adventures is Johnny. Yeah. (laughs) I felt it was more of a respect thing. Like, if you're going to say, hey, we're going to leave. If you want us to leave, then you should leave. (laughs) Yeah, I don't want to mess with anything. Like, my mother told me stories about uh, Ouija boards. Yeah, I don't mess with that stuff. She doesn't mess with it because she said at one point, my aunt was having a birthday party and they were messing with one. And I don't know. Does the devil have a wife? That's an old. I was about to say it's an old wives tale, uh, but that's a thing I've always heard. There's little things in the South. Like if it's raining when the sun's out, that means the devil's beating his wife. That's one of the little sayings. Okay. Cause I guess. So supposedly he does or something. L- Lilith or I don't know. Uh, according to Wait. South Park, it's Saddam Hussein. Thank you, because this was getting heavy. Because I don't mess with that stuff. Like yeah. my friend Dave had me watch The Exorcist, and I didn't sleep for a month. Like, yeah, I, I don't care. Literally have to be exhausted. I don't mess. I there's just certain things I don't mess with: electrical, gas, or demons. I'm sorry. Three things. Top three <laughs> things. Top three things I don't mess around. With. I love that list. Yeah, yeah I not I not in I, that order. Yeah, <laughs> I live in this. I. I Part of me thinks that the Ouija board is overhyped, uh, and that it's literally just a toy because it's made by but, Bradley. Yeah, but on top of that, I'm also goes like you know a just in case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm a just in case guy. I'm also I'm with that with everything. Yeah, I am too. But also, like I like to think I'm a 
healthy skeptic. And by that, I mean, I'm very open to it. And I've obviously had these experiences. I haven't even told them all yet. But I'm also in a school of thought that you you need to try to debunk it. Because if you can't debunk it, that adds more credibility to it. But you got to be very honest about the debunking. You can't just be like, oh, well, it's obviously this or that. Yeah, because I guess also, too, when they were doing it, they li- supposedly my mother lived in a house. Well, she... She does. She said a lot of things when we were kids, and then all of a sudden, when you mentioned them at adults, she'd just be like, "I just said that because I needed you guys <laughs> to do this," which gives her all the credit of the world because she was a single mom. I mean, she was with us all the time, other than from noon on Saturday until about four o'clock on Sunday. Those were the yeah. only times she did not have us, other than when she was at work. And as a parent that spends a lot of time with the kids. He, you get, yeah. you get it. You get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but those were the one thing she always stuck by. Like you never like because she mentions uh uh like I guess they had like the soap dish mermaids or I don't know. I feel like every probably buddy had these, the frog that you could put like steel wool or a sponge into into its mouth. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking well, about. Yeah. I guess they had mermaids or something. And like the tails would break on those and that's the house where she supposedly saw the devil's wife run across the cabinets and that's like the only time like an image of her just go across like that was like the only time that i felt like she the story never changed right even and if it did it was just maybe that little bit but it was always the same serious look like listen this did happen yeah. Other than like, don't put. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got a lot of leaves, and we would rake them, and it was don't put yourself underneath a pile of leaves, or you yeah. get run over by a lawnmower, a car is gonna run you over. <laughs> yeah, one of those. Seems things, like yeah. a kid has done that everywhere. We were told uh, we had a crick or a creek, no matter where you're from in the world. All, yeah, both languages. Uh, is it crick or creek where you're from? Depends on who's saying it. <laughs> okay. We'd have one of those by the house, by my grandmother's house, and it would be iced over. And as a kid, you're like, oh, you could go on that. I should be like, no, a kid fell through there and died. So, like, that probably could have did or could have happened, but it was always like a little bit of a different area each time she stole that. Right. Story. But yeah, yeah those yeah. ones were always right on point. Like, my, I, my mom has always told this story and i'm not going to say it because i think i'll get it wrong but the gist of it was that she felt that after a relative had passed away that they came and visited her Mm -hmm. afterwards and my mom is not the type to make up stories that's just not who she is uh and she's always stood by that story and i think that's part of the reason why i was like something's to this uh yeah it's just such a weird weird strange like uh, thing yeah like while she was awake or like in a dream yeah no she was awake wow. yeah yeah um now i've had because my so, da- when my mother died my daughter had a dream of my mother but all my mother told her to do was clean her room well i mean after you know, which was you know, on brand for what my mother would have told her. so I mean, it was I've very had, believable i mean anytime uh, a loved one has passed away that i was very close to i've had dreams about them that were very pleasant and i'm glad i had those uh you know i've dreamt about my grandparents all of them sadly yeah. they're all gone now i've had a dream about all of them now uh trevor's mom who i was very very close to as well you know she's been in my dreams before and i consider those happy visits for me so mm-hmm. i'm glad to have those but yeah it's just also speaking on on that uh after my grandparents passed away and again, this could just be coincidence. I'm not saying it's definitely what it is. But at the house that I'm in now, I've had odd stuff. I don't feel, I'm not scared. I don't feel scared or creeped out or anything here. But there's been weird stuff that's happened here. One time when I was by myself, I swear to you, Andrew, I heard somebody singing in another room. And I was like, well, maybe somebody left a radio on. But I went there, there was nothing there. And it was a very faint light singing. Uh, another time when I was in my own room, the one that I'm recording from now, I had 
I had a jacket hanging on a doorknob like you do, you know, it was just yeah. hanging there. And I swear to you, the arm of the jacket moved by itself. There's no vent over there. There's no fan over there. Uh, I mean, it, it didn't just move barely. It moved, moved. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did that. Like, like waved wow. high to you? Yeah, basically. Uh, and the other thing that happened is a number of times uh, when I've been asleep or when I'm like, you know, you're kind of waking up. And that could be a part of it. I'm not going to say like it's not. But it's felt like uh, somebody was getting on the bed with me, sort of like, you know, that type of thing. Embrace here, and stuff? Yeah. Well, not that. I never was happy <laughs> about it. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, but the, the thing is, though, like I've never once felt like a heaviness with the, any of those. So it's. So, like, my brain is like, these are, you know, there's, if, if there's something there, I don't think it's anything I need to be afraid of type of thing. Yeah, we had, like, an urban legend, too, because uh, I lived pretty damn close to, well, I live, what, what is right in there is the Love Canal, but where they contain it. Oh, yeah, yeah. If uh, those who don't know, just a, a quick, quick uh, yeah. recap of the Love Canal. It's pretty much uh, a guy named like hooker chemical or a guy wanted to build a canal and then hooker chemical was like, Hey, this guy never built this canal. Hey, you know, where's a good place. Dump toxic waste. We'll just dox. We'll just dump it in here. And that happened through oxy. And over time it started seeping in through people's basements. And yeah, it was a pretty big neighborhood. neighborhood. It's huge. It's, it's a huge neighborhood. And everybody had to leave basically because of that. Uh, yes. Yes. Cause there was a, uh, and then they once they kind of cleaned it up and there is a contained fence area, just one fenced area where I guess they contained everything. And my uncle like my uncle always liked to point out where he played baseball on the toxic waste dump. It's kind of <laughs> kind of cool. But it's all cleaned up now. There's people living in the homes surrounding it. And it was actually kind of cool how they did it because that's how my uh my mom got a when we got a house over there, they actually would kind of flip it and redo it for you. Like yeah. go through, put in a furnace, new furnace and everything else, just so they could kind of populate that area. But there was a lot of also abandoned houses and it was called, what did we call? Oh, the mushroom house. And supposedly if you went up to the mushroom house and you flashed your lights at it three times and like beeped or something, a witch would appear, but it never happened. Yeah. I love those little stories like that but, that you hear with your kids. Yeah. But it was, uh, I mean, you do the Bloody Mary thing, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, we all. I, I think it. every kid's done that. <laughs> I was good fun. I did it in the bathroom at the YMCA. <laughs> There's a lot of things you do in public bathrooms. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Or yeah. Not. Oh, I get it. Yeah, for its medical reasons, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Um. It. I definitely remember as a kid. Uh, my mom used to babysit my cousins, and we're really close to the same age. And we would like go into the to the uh, room with a mirror and we would shut the doors and get it dark and we would dare each other to do that the bloody mary thing and i would legit get creeped out and not want to do it as a kid i didn't i was like i don't want to do this i don't i did i didn't want to do it i think i wanted to see what was going to happen in a way yeah but i didn't want to be the one to do it <laughs> wasn't there something other than bloody mary there's there's, some... there's a bunch of them i think there's quite a few of them i can't re i can't remember all of them but i remember doing that and be like nothing happened i'm cool yeah now what i will say is i'm very jealous of you and the fact that i don't remember ever seeing an actual i figure or anything like that i've just seen weird stuff that i can't explain like things i have seen things move that kind of thing but i know i saw it it could be once again it could be because nobody else saw it it's kind of like one of those things where it could be my mind yeah being tricks on me or something but i saw this figment come out of the wall look at me turn and then go back through the wall yeah well that's a thing too about these old places i've been to quite a few of them and of course i gotta take the ghost tours on these if they have them you know i've been to gettysburg and that just has a different feel to the place altogether anyway uh i've been to waverly which is this huge it's in kentucky it's this huge, well, it was a huge 
uh, tuber- when tuberculosis was a big thing. Okay. Uh, uh, it was, it's, it kind of has a lot of people that had that. So a lot of people have died there. It literally has a area called the body shoot in it, <laughs> that type of stuff. And it is, a, I can't stress how, he, if you look up pictures of it, it is humongous. It's a giant building. And it's in the middle right now. It's in the middle of the woods, basically. Like getting up to it, you take this long drive up this single lane road. And the drive is creepy in itself. But then when you get there, it's like it just opens up. The woods opens up to this giant behemoth of a building. And it's just, it's got the creepiest feel to it. I didn't. When I t- when I was there, I didn't experience anything, but like just the, just being there and like it's just pitch dark. There's no light really there except from what the moon can give you. <laughs> uh, it's just so so creepy, and it's probably the creepiest I've ever felt being at a place. Is Waverly highly recommend it for any for anybody for, who loved both history and the paranormal stuff because both are very fascinating there. And uh, there's a thing you can do. Uh... Oh, the little girl. So I was right. I had to look up the story because yeah, because uh, every year at Halloween time, I think it was channel seven around here would do like the haunted places. And this one, I don't know. The haunted girl at holiday Inn would always interest me. And it was, it was a little, was a little girl, eight to 10 years old. They had a, a, at Waverly that the body shoot that they had. It's a very long declining hallway that they would slide the bodies down. But oh, if you're oh. there, no matter when you're there, it's so long that it literally, it literally slowly goes down into darkness. That's <laughs> so. Didn't care for it, but you could walk down there and back if you wanted to, and I did it, and I was like, I didn't want to do it ever again. Speaking of ghost hunts, do you remember the MTV show Fear? Yes. <laughs> okay. Not. To, I don't know if anybody actually remembers it, but I not too many people do because I think there was only maybe like three episodes or something. But that's the thing we need to do for a, a future episode is like MTV shows that were very short lived. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> what was that wrestling show they had? Remember that wrestling show they had? Uh, was that wrestle Wrestling Society X? Uh, yes, that's it. Yes. I had to bring in wrestling to this. We hadn't done wrestling yet. Yeah, see, there's a guy who said that, oh, the ghost's name is Tanya. Oh, that's a good name. Uh, and a guest said he saw her standing at the foot of her bed. Assumed it was a dream. He saw the girl vanish and heard other stories of the same of Tanya haunting the building. Tanya, oh, uh, right. did ta- Not- Tanya haunting, did she... Uh- did she have a rival and she had their knees taken out? Yes. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> <A> ghost <remember>. rival. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I had anything other. I did. I don't know. Do, if you, I... do you have a quote? Like a, just a quote from like a real thing I have and it just sticks in your brain. Uh, just there's that image of that poor. What's that skater's name? Uh, her rival whose knees was taken out. Oh, Nancy Kerrigan. Nancy Kerrigan. I just have this. I just always remember her being on the ground. This poor woman going, "Why me?" And I just that's always in my brain. I just quote that all the time. <laughs> I have that stuck in my brain. Uh, well, I don't. Well, I don't have that one, but I do have, like I said, from X Men, the first episode, and it was a Toad. I can't remember his name, but he looked at the one guy that was like trying to like hurt the mutants and they're like and he was he's like why do you hate me and he's like because you were bored that was there's a bunch like that yeah like uh when han solo like like poor guys just trying to say han you gotta be careful out there on han he's like i'll see you in hell <laughs> just like it's a little overboard there mr <laughs> mr solo and the other one that i love is uh one of my favorite shows is bob's burgers and there's just this one quick thing where teddy who's bob's best friend him and Bob are taking a hip hop dance class. And so Teddy is trying to be hip, but also he's like in his forties. Right. So uh, he goes to the teacher and he goes, and she goes, sup. And he goes, sup, ma'am. <laughs> just the one sticks with me. <laughs> it's just such a great quick line. Uh, man. Uh, what other ghost stories do you have? Andrew? Do you got any more? To, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, cause that's, I kind of led with like the banger 
with Thor. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's also let's talk about. Uh, I've never had any experiences with cryptids or like Bigfoot or anything, but my area has had a few weird we Bigfoot type thing. Uh, uh, one time, not too long ago, some giant footprints were found. Not too far from me, I think I'm in the sorry. same county I'm in. I'm sorry. Yeah, I told you not to go walking there at night, but uh, they found your footprints, Andrew. I was singing the song, I'll go walking <laughs> after midnight. Yeah. Uh, 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 did you see that recent video that went viral of uh, these people were on a train and they saw something out in the distance and somebody grabbed their phone to take a video of it. It looks like some big hairy creature walking and then squatting down. Like he's going to take a poop or something. <laughs> that was Matt. Uh, no. <laughs> well, Matt, Matt, did a great job. All, Matt and I were hiking. Uh, I can't, I'm trying to think it's just such a, just know it's like a very like weird thing when you when i actually like seen something or feel something like yeah but when it came to that especially as like a child i think if i didn't have that moment i don't think i would have been kind of like what you are in that skeptic the believer skepticism type thing where it's like yeah i think i've I've always been drawn to that stuff though like uh you know like growing up x files was appointment television for me and my mom right as like a show that we watched together was x files on sunday nights i always looked forward to that uh stuff like that always just really fascinated me even as a kid i would want to know as much as i could about this weird strange side of the world i don't think we have any like cryptic stuff even in where i live like there was never like a story of like don't go there or such and such thing might be there or anything yeah. or any sightings. I don't know. That's pretty well. Cause both of us, I mean, if you, you growing up in, Niag- in the Niagara Falls type area uh, and where I'm at growing up and near the mountains, both have a lot of deep uh, forest and such, right? Uh, My area does quite a bit. It depends on where you go. Yeah. In why did oh my goodness, Satanic Origins of Niagara Falls and Devil's Hole. So that's why it's called Devil's Hole. Okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> Didn't teach us that one in school. <laughs> uh but yeah, I there was never anything like crazy. Like there was Devil's Hole, but yeah. honestly, it's called Devil's Hole, but we all walk it. Like yeah. to walk along Devil's Hole, like the gorge, but I would not recommend it because it's very, it's not like a very structurally sound path. It's like this is this is Mother Earth. It's it's, it's not safe, right? Yeah, it it is, but it isn't. Like it's not. You know, there's a chance I would not go on a rainy day. Okay, yeah, are you one of those who gets? Because I watch a lot of those. Uh, videos of people who, like we said, go on these ghost hunts, but they'll like break into a place by themselves. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Just from a safety standpoint, that's stupid. No, I would never do it because, once again, uh, where I'm from or in Niagara Falls, very high crime rate and very high drug use. So, yeah. you're taking a chance, if you break into there, you're taking a chance with a lot of things, like even. Going into our work at night, uh, our GM was also a part-time cop for uh, for one of like the little villages around there by us, and he had his gun. And this is a securely fenced-in area, but he brought his gun just in case because yeah. you don't know what you're going to get into. And that's why when I hear like see some people say like, "Oh, there's this abandoned house in Niagara Falls. It's old." People are like, let's go in there. I'm like, no, don't. Uh, for one, it's breaking and entering, <laughs> which is against the law. And for two, uh, you don't know what's in there. Like we had over in Love Canal, there was 93rd Street School. I'm pretty sure you and Matt talked about it in your yeah. retro pop thing. That was all boarded up. 
and a lot of people would break in there and that's probably the craziest thing is supposedly there was sat- satanic worshiping going on there but you never heard anybody else say it other than amongst your friends. That that always happens with any area that's quote unquote of Mannings. For whatever reason, somebody will always start the rumor of some sort of satanic thing happening there. I'm not saying that it doesn't. I'm sure it does at times, but I, it's just that's every time. I don't know. They tore it down. Now there's baseball fields. My kids played there. Oh, um, satanic baseball fields. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't feel a weird thing going on there there was yeah. no hole breaking it open no stave puff marshmallow man nothing crazy going on oh i mean it's a little sad so that's why but there was that where once again i don't know uh if probably the fear of my mother <laughs> that's why i never broke into that stuff I've yeah. had friends that have broken into it, all those abandoned houses. I've had friends that have broken into those houses to see what they are. But in the end of the day, I just feel like you're breaking the law, man. And yeah, that's a part of it for me. But also, just even if nobody or nothing's in there, a lot of these places are so old that it's just not physically safe to be in there. Like you could get hurt, like just maybe you fall through the floor for crying out loud. Or something like that. And if you're by yourself, what are you going to do? Yeah, because there's a lot of people in Niagara Falls that go into these abandoned houses and they rob it. If there is any copper in it, they rob it for the copper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just break right in there and just rob it. That's why I love when people are like, I'm going to go in this abandoned house. No, no, don't, 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 don't do it. Let, let who's ever occupying that place at that time, just let them be because you don't yeah. know what they're capable of. Yep. But yeah, I oh man, it's just it's just a very weird thing. And like Halloween is one of those times where you're like what are we doing here, where you just kind of think about those those weird, creepy moments. I think maybe a little bit more, and just to relive and experience them, to actually like talk about them is almost like reliving and experience them because. Like I said, it's been probably years. Last time I told the story about the ghost at the fort was with Chris. Uh, anything with the stuff at my old house, that was all with Chris too because I think there's a lot of skepticism. More, not like our skepticism where like show it, but like it just doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. I think the smart place to be is in the middle of that. Like just kind of, yeah, I, I do think most of it can probably be explained by natural stuff. Like it's not at all paranormal, but I do think there's chances that some of stuff is a little weird. Yeah. You know? It's funny. Cause isn't it supposed to be like kids can see ghosts better too, or something. That's one of the things just because kids are, have less, uh, what do they call it? Like, you know, as you're an adult and you grow up, you're kind of hardened by, uh, just life itself growing up, you know, uh, and kids have way less of that because they're young and they've not had life kind of <laughs> knock them and mold them into an adult. Yeah. So they're more open to it. And pets as well. I yeah, think I are another thing too. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't like when my dog just randomly barks <laughs> with you. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, my, one of my cats was just like, the, and cats do us all the time. But the just staring in a direction that wouldn't respond to me at all. Uh-huh. You know those you know those videos of that they like to do like a there's a glitch in the matrix type of thing. Yeah. It was like that because she was just staring in a direction, like not blinking or anything for like a minute. And I was like, You're gonna move. <laughs> so is there any place childhood or anything else that you would actually like to do like a ghost hunt at? What? Oh man. That's, I think, I've been very fortunate that I got to visit the big one, which was Waverly for me. Um, You've done way more. I've done one building on Highland Avenue in Niagara Falls, New York, which is not a highlight compared to. I mean, I've done, I've done Waverly. uh, I've done a lot in Charleston, South Carolina. That's a pretty big. Isn't that like the place capital of the United States? I heard there's a lot there. The the haunted the jail there, the old jail. Is if you're in Charleston, I really recommend it again for both history if you like history and uh ghost stuff. I think it's the place where the first woman was ever executed, 
like a oh. woman who was a prisoner was ex- I think she had killed her. I don't know. I can't remember the story. Wasn't exactly. she the she one did. that was like possessed by the devil or said she was possessed? Something like that. Yeah, she, she had like a really real... she had a really crazy last words. I think something like that. Um, but yeah, she. Uh, but that like that whole jail is really. It's been on all the ghost hunting shows too. Uh, but yeah, that whole city. It's just a very old city. All the graveyards have like the old, like from the you know sixteen hundreds type, you know, ones from that long ago. Uh, and I mean, a lot of this, some of the streets are still like not paved; they're like uh, cobblestone, uh, you know, and they still do all that kind of stuff. It's a beautiful place, but uh, don't go to summer because it's stupid hot. Yeah, I don't go. I don't even ah. Uh... Well, I'm stupid hot where I live. Yeah, you're in Dallas. So, well, close to it. You know. Yeah. So I've been to Eastern State Penitentiary during the day. Yes, that's a big one. Yeah. But I'd like to go at night. Right, yeah. Because that's the other funny thing, too, is walking down the women's corridor. I felt a little heavy down there. Like, there was a little bit more watching. And I was with my boss at the time. This is what we did on a work trip. We left. <laughs> I I didn't always like see eye to eye with my boss. He was kind of like my friend too, but as friends we were fine. But as like boss employee, we didn't see eye and eye or yeah. eye to eye on a lot of things. But we took a trip and we had to go somewhere by Philadelphia, and we left this like work meeting like really really early, just so we could get to Philadelphia and get to like. Eastern State Penitentiary and everything before before everything started shut down. Yeah, I was very thankful for that. But yeah, that that was a very interesting place. I would like to experience more at night. Yeah, I think I would. The one I would like to do is maybe go back to Gettysburg because when we we when I went there before we were kind of rushed and it was something I wanted to do and I kind of forced the group to go to. Like I didn't even care about the ghost stuff. You know, I'm just a, you know how I am with history. I love history and. I just wanted to kind of go there and just see it for myself. And it's just a heavy feeling, like one of those heavy feeling places. As soon as you stand on the battlefield, it's it's pretty surreal. But it's also the only place where um, we the government threatened to uh, throw me in jail for trespassing. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes. Because little did we know, uh, we went, of course, we did a ghost tour after that. There's ghost tours for Gettysburg like crazy. And our tour guide was telling us about all these weird things that happen if you go. Because there's a there's a main type of road that kind of goes through the battlefield now for people to take and drive through it, you know. And she was just telling us about all these things that you can see if you go at night. And we're like, oh, well, we're going to go do that, right? We didn't know that they had certain hours that you were not allowed to go in there because the gate was open, and we thought we could just go in there and drive it. You're like, and we were and, and we were passing cars that were just kind of staying on the side of the road, so we thought we weren't the only ones doing it. And then all of a sudden, there was <laughs> flashing lights behind us pulling us over, <laughs> and uh, we were under act pretty hardcore. So I found out what that woman said. That's what I was doing. Oh, what was what did she? The woman in Charleston at the Charleston jail. Yeah, this one's pretty crazy. If you have any, if you have, oh, if any of you have a message for the devil, tell me now, for I shall be seeing him shortly. That's it. And yeah. then she jumped off the stand and killed herself. Man, like I, I know she wasn't a great person. But that's pretty hardcore. Hang on, yeah. <laughs> quality, quality human being there. But I I can't remember what she did. I know it wasn't good, obviously, but yeah. Well, uh, now you now you got me wondering what she did. This is a future history of creeps episode right here. Oh, have you guys covered this? I know you guys. No, no. Got like a back catalog. I remember when I first started listening, to you guys, you were like, "Hey, wait, I think we might have did this one before." <laughs> we got to make sure. Uh. What was her name? Uh, Levia Fisher, Levia Fisher. She was young, twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah. Convictions highway highway robbery. Come on, there had to be more than that. Trying to read, like, find out where the story is real quick. 
there's more to his story. Future Always. Future episode. Yeah, I'm putting in my uh, future <laughs> yeah. episode ideas. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. There it is. What also, one know? thing that I do want to encourage people to do is no matter the town that you live in or live near to, they almost always have a museum and <laughs> you can find some fascinating things about your area, like ghost related or not. I uh, am beyond glad. And I don't know. I'm mad that it took me so long to go into the local museum near me because I learned so many fascinating things from this kid who got in trouble because he tried to derail a train uh, by putting quarters on the, this is a long time ago on a train track and it worked apparently. And he got oh, the blame for work? it. Yeah, apparently it's what that article I read that they had posted there. And one of the first, uh, kind of going along with Charleston, a, a lady got in a lot of trouble and was to be uh, beheaded, I think, or something like that. I can't remember the exact story. It's been forever. But um, one of the early tales of a woman um, getting in trouble for, I think she murdered a couple people or something like that. Pretty yeah. wild stuff. But I do recommend uh, you'll find at least one fascinating thing about your area guaranteed that's what i did here was uh uh where i live in roanoke there's a little museum and we went in there and i got to see the pictures and it kind of yeah, crow towing yeah <laughs> kind of gives you the understanding of why things are named that because yeah like, what is why is it medlin middle school and then all of a sudden you go in there and you see all these people with like last name medlin and i'm like oh I could have Googled. I'm fascinated that, that I you, forget the I'm, internet exists. I'm fascinated that an area in Texas is named Roanoke. Because that's a big thing in North Carolina, obviously, yeah, I, with the lost colony and stuff. Yeah, I get I get a lot of like Virginia. You yeah. Mean, live in Virginia? Yeah, I live in Roanoke right on the border of Fort Worth. Hmm, yeah. So but yeah, that's been our ghost stories. Uh, check out the Facebook pages and all the social medias. Andrew does a great job on there. Tell us your ghost stories. Uh, I would love to read some that you've experienced. Yeah. That'd be fascinating. Yeah, shoot us a message. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we're winding down here. Uh, I think how many more spooky episodes one. are we going to have, Andrew? Just one. one more. I think this is a good finale one that we're leading off on. Yeah, I think so. We found a list of the top. Are you afraid of the dark episodes? Yeah. And we are going to go through, as Johnny loves to do, we are going to grade each episode and tell you how we feel about them. I'm very excited to do this. I think it's going to really get me into the Halloween spirit for sure. Yes. Watching, just listen to that theme song is going to get me going. <laughs> That's a great theme song. <laughs> just love like the dust or the. Yeah. Iron. So perfectly done. Yeah. Afraid of the dark. This is like the tales of the crypt for little kids. Yeah. Well, it's you know, tales of the crypt's probably a kid show for you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Yeah. Uh but that is it. Like Johnny said, check us out. YouTube, Facebook, uh Patreon, if you like what we do, shoot over Instagram. Over. Yep, Instagram. I just kind of go through Facebook on that one, but uh, all of those, check us out, like, subscribe, just let us know how how we're doing. Give us a review. Unless it's really negative, then I don't, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, well, only want only want full unadulterated praise. <laughs> we're exennial, so we want hard yeah. truth, but not too hard a truth yeah i want you to like if you're going to criticize me that's fine but also at the same time tell me something i'm doing really well true give us i need both of these compliment yeah. sandwich yeah yeah with, with that being said good morning good afternoon and good night and don't be scared <laughs> <laughs>